bless me like never before riding that tsunami of glory and leaving the dragon dead on the beach amen okay this is from the prayer of Habakkuk the prayer of Habakkuk in chapter 3 in the safari you have come forth to deliver your people you have come forth to deliver your people to deliver your anointed ones God you have come forth to deliver your people to deliver your anointed ones you will smash the roof of the villain's house and raise it from foundation to top Selah you will crack the enemy's skull with your bludgeon. Blown away shall be his warriors, whose delight is to crush me suddenly, to devour a pauper in an ambush. God fights our battles for us. And it says here in the prayer of Habakkuk that he's come forth to deliver his people, his anointed ones, and he will smash the roof of the villain's house and raise it from foundation to top, Selah. It says, God, you will crack the enemy's skull with your bludgeon, and blown away shall be his warriors, whose delight is to crush me suddenly, to devour a pauper in an ambush. Amen. Oh God, if you would only slay the wicked, that's what David said. King David, the man after God's own heart in Psalms 139, 19. Oh God, if you would only slay the wicked, you murderers, get away from me. And in Isaiah 42, 13, it says, God goes forth like a warrior, whipping up rage like a fighter, yelling and roaring aloud, then charging upon the enemy. God goes forth like a warrior, whipping up rage like a fighter, yelling and roaring aloud, then charging upon the enemy. That's the word of God. If you don't like it, I don't really don't care. <laughs> God has come forth to deliver his people. Amen. He's roaring and restoring. And he's sifting and shifting. We're getting ready to pivot to the to the uh, to the river here in a few days at the end of the month. In Matthew eleven, it says, "In the new state of the church, where the true glory of God shines, the people are not compared together." but by the kinds of doctrines, the preaching of John with the law and the prophets, and again, the most clear preaching of the gospel with John's. They prophesied of things to come, which are now present and clearly and plainly seen. And from the, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. I looked it up in the Hebrew Bible, and in the Hebrew Bible it says, from the time of John the Immerser until now, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence. Yes, the violent ones are trying to snatch it away from us. That's what the Jewish Bible says. The violent ones are trying to snatch away kingdom of heaven from us for all the prophets in the Torah prophesied until John indeed if you are willing to accept it he is Elijah who was whose coming was predicted it was at that time that Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you concealed these things from the sophisticated and the educated and revealed them to ordinary folks. 
Yes, Father, I thank you that it pleased you to do this. In the Hebrew, it says, He thanked Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, that he concealed these secrets from the sophisticated and the educated and revealed them to ordinary folks. And he says, yes, Father, I thank you that it pleased you to do this. That's what Jesus said about the Father. What was he talking about? He said it would be more tolerable and more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for this generation on the day of judgment. For you will be brought down to hell. For if the miracles done in you have been done in Sodom, you would still be in existence today. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more bearable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for you, this wicked generation in the, in the last days. My father, Jesus said, my father has handed over everything to me. And no one fully knows the son except the father. And no one fully knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. Come to me now, all you who are struggling and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 11, in the new state of the church where the true glory shines, the persons are not compared together except by the kinds of doctrines, the preaching of John with the law and the prophets, the most clear preaching of the gospel. They prophesied these things to come and they are now present and clearly and plainly seen. For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. We won't even remember the old earth, the new heavens and new earth. Excuse me. God creates a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. Hmm. It says here in Isaiah, Isaiah 65 in the Geneva Bible, I will so alter and change the state of my church that it shall seem to dwell in a new world. I will so astonish them and make them so giddy, so giddy that they shall not know which way to go. I will no more suffer my church to be desolate as in, as in times past. The meaning is, in this wonderful restoration of the church, there will be no weakness of youth, no infirmities of old age, but all should be fresh and flourishing, fat, fresh, and flourishing. And this is accomplished in the heavenly Jerusalem, when all sin shall cease and tears shall be wiped away. I will astonish them with wonders. The prophets speak of this to move the people to remember God's benefits in times past, that they may be confirmed in their troubles. Because if he did it before, he'll do it again. For I did choose them to be mine, and that they should be holy, and not deceive my expectation. He bore their afflictions and griefs as they had been his own. The prophet says that he will never cease to declare unto the people the good tidings of their deliverance until they have the full deliverance. And the prophet speaketh to encourage all ministers to the setting forth of God's mercies towards his church. For thou shalt have a more excellent fame 
than thou hast had in the past. He shall esteem me as dear and precious as a king doth his crown. Thou shalt no more be contemned as a woman forsaken of her husband. You will be God's delight. You will be married to God, the bridegroom, that he may replenish his children. For as much as they confess one faith and one religion through Jesus, they are in the same bond of marriage with Jesus, and they are called the children of the church. Inasmuch as Christ Jesus maketh her plentiful to bring forth children unto him, prophets, pastors, and ministers. He exhorts the ministers never to cease to call upon God by prayer for the deliverance of the church and to teach others to do the same. Isaiah exhorts ministers to never cease to call upon God by prayer for the deliverance of the church and to teach others to do the same. For the restoration of all the world shall praise him, signifying the great number that should come to the church and by what means he would prepare for the restitution. You prophets and ministers, show the people of this their deliverance, which was chiefly meant of our salvation by Christ. He shall have power to bring his purposes to pass. That is, one over whom God hath had a singular care to recover her when she was lost. The church will be filled with the knowledge of God and abounding with multitudes of converts. church will be abounding with multitudes of converts in this last end time revival in Jesus name and the church shall be fruitful and humble and lovely Come forth to deliver your people, to deliver your anointed ones, and you will smash the roof of the villain's house and raise it from foundation to top. You will crack the enemy's skull with your bludgeon. Blown away shall be his warriors who delight to crush me suddenly, to devour a pauper in an ambush. O oh God, if you would only slay the wicked, for God goes forth like a warrior whipping up rays like a fighter, yelling and roaring aloud, then charging upon the enemy. Amen. God is charging upon our enemy. God is charging upon our enemy, and he's coming forth to deliver his people, his anointed ones. In Jesus' name, amen. God gave me that vision years ago of a tsunami of glory hitting the earth that will leave the dragon dead on the beach. Amen. Hallelujah. God covered my head with his blood in a vision. And it was so much blood, I had to shake all the blood out of my hair. It was running down my face. And when I shook the hair out of my face and out of my hair, I came out of the vision and there was people laying on the floor in the heavy kabod glory. And God filled my belly with living water in a vision. And he caught me up into the spirit and slay me in the spirit for an hour and show me his glory in a vision. I can testify all day because it makes last first in the tail of the head and uses the foolish and the ignorant and the unlearned so that God gets all the glory just like he said in his word here, he says, he says, um, where is it at? Let me go back and find it. He 
says he doesn't it says Jesus said this to God in verse 25 it says it was at this time that Yeshua said I thank you father Lord of heaven and earth that you concealed these things from the sophisticated and the educated and revealed them to ordinary folks yes father I thank you that it pleased you to do this God uses the foolish and the ignorant and the unlearned so that he gets all the glory and he hides this from the sophisticated and the educated and he re reveals it to ordinary folks Amen. That's a good word. Thank you, Jesus.